You can all feel it. You can see it. And you hear about it wherever you go now. We live in dead America. How do we reconcile the wrongs in America? I'm Ed Waters, and I'm your host of Dead America. Join me as we dive deep into the great divides, the misunderstandings and confusion that plagues us here in Dead America. Let's have us a look. Welcome to the show, folks. As always, I have a special guest for you today. Burma Briefs. Bulma Briefs, excuse me. All right, the nickname Bulma Briefs. We're going to call her Bulma. If I mess that up, you make sure to correct me throughout this interview. Bulma is 31 years of age, and she's been homeless on and off for about two years. How does that make you feel, Bulma? Depressed a lot. Um, it seems like every time I've gotten a place, I either get screwed over or something happens and I can't stay. And I end up out at parks like this. Yeah, that... Uh, well... Thank God you have a mate to help you through it, huh? Oh, yeah. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't. I'd be alone and cold and have nowhere, nobody to protect me. Yes. that's that. We actually talked about that on the last episode with Joker, about securing your possessions and just being, feeling that sense of security. That's hard to do, isn't it? Oh, yeah, especially if you're alone. Yeah. Well, being a female isn't being easy anyway out here without the proper facilities. And, yeah. You know, a sense of being able to walk to a bathroom and take a shower yeah. when you feel like it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Some, that's where body spray comes in handy. <laughs> yeah. Well, still, it's, yeah. it sucks. Oh, yeah. You know, the... The way people look at you, talk about you, just look oh, yeah. the other way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got that a lot out here since I've been out here in this state alone. It, Oregon's potentially bad with... Yeah. From what I've seen, yeah. Of judgmental type people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, if, even people that are supposed to be family judge. Yes. I mean, his family alone, because, you know, sometimes people, even though they shower every day, they smell, you know. I stink <laughs> all the time. You know, it, yeah. some people can't help it. And That's right. And his family's always judged him for that because he's not the way they want him to be. My family is the, is the opposite of that. You know, my family does what they can to help when they can. But there's sometimes I can't really help with the place or, you know, things. But they'll bring, like, food or something over, you know? Yeah. His family could care less if he's and homeless. And I, it's, to me, it's not homeless. It's houseless. Oh, good point. Because home is where your heart is. And as long as I'm with him, my heart, my he's my home. That's a wonderful attitude to have, yeah. especially when you're out here in dead America. Oh, yeah. You know, no, it's I had not a brother, easy. Passed away a couple of days after Thanksgiving a few years back. He used to always tell me that, you know, we're homeless. You're not homeless. Homeless is where your heart is as long as you have each other. Amen. You know, your house. Wise was, brother. Yeah. He was ex-army and he had a lot of wisdom. Yes. We find a lot of people, you know, the family is dissolving. Mm -hmm. And the care for one another, it's dissolving. And oh, yeah. that's the purpose of this show is to show there is people that care out there. Yeah. We need to learn compassion for one another again. Oh, yeah. You know, it's even when you have a house, it's just unless you're able to be with that other person that you're with, it's not really a home. Yeah. 
you know, I've had plenty of places I've lived off and on the last two years, but without him around, it's not home. I feel, it's just, I'm wondering. Yeah, that's exactly what your partner said about you. <laughs> you know, that, that means you're going to have a long life together. Oh, yeah. Me and my wife have been together for 35 years, and I'm 53 years old, so... I'm here to say I've seen a lot of different things, and when you have that much love for one another, oh. there's a strength to that. We're what people would call twin flames. Like, there's, a, I'm into a Greek mythology, really into it, and there's this quote from Greek mythology that humans were bodies with two, four arms, four legs, and two faces, and fearing the power that we'd have, Zeus split us into two searching this world to find our yeah, soulmate. And there are very few cases where there are people do find their soulmate. That's true. And I feel like I found mine with him. Like I'm when I'm away from him I'm sicker than when I'm with him. Yes. You know, I suffer from PTSD induced seizures and when I'm not around him I have more seizures. And when yes. I'm around him they don't even it's exist. A comfort. Yes. You know, he's been the first and guy that I've been with that if I do go into one around him, knows how to carefully take me out of one to bring me back to myself. Because with my seizures, I, when I brought out the wrong way, I go back to a past version of myself. Yeah. Like a younger version where I felt safe and secure. Right. And most of the time I've, when that's happened, my exes have always, I've nearly stayed as that old version of me. Yeah. And he's been the first that can gently brush my cheek and I'm awake um myself tenderness awesome he may be an ass at times we all are <laughs> you know I meant I could be a bitch at times sorry for my language I call it hoodie syndrome you know but what what couple doesn't have a little argument here and there 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 is a old counselor that me and my wife watched some uh marital counseling uh, tapes with our own relationship every relationship goes through its moments yeah but gary small smalley i i screwed that up please forgive me folks i'll put it in a link in the notes of this episode but this individual he does a thing on boundaries you mm -hmm. have to set boundaries oh, yeah. no matter what you do in life and he pointed out the difference between man and woman, and woman. we are so far <laughs> apart, it's like ape and zebra, <laughs> you know, so to identify with each other is very important, and to <coughs> understand that everybody is different, not just man and woman, but everybody is unique, and they yeah. have their own perspectives, Oh yeah. so we have to bring that back into dead America so we can all be alive again, oh, yeah. happy. It's like one of the things that as much as I hate his grandma, she used to always say is, you're like two horses on a carriage. You're going the opposite direction. is going to wreck the carriage. You have to be on the same path. Like we're stubborn. I'm Irish and Scottish and German. He's, and I have Viking blood in me and same as him. So and we're both fire signs. Ah. We're always buddy heads. So you'll we'll have stubborn. an interesting relationship. You know, even because when I lived in California, when I first got with him, we talked on the phone 24-7. It, it was our way of getting through the day and slept on the phone. And everybody always told me, oh, you're not going to have anything to talk about when you get together. Five years later, we still have shit to talk about. That's good. You know, there's always something. I mean, we have... I like a certain sports team. He hates that team. He likes it otherwise. So it's funny when we watch sports together, like baseball. Yeah. <laughs> and we got the Giants, which is my team going, versus the Diamondbacks, his team. We got two different. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see that you can act oh, yeah. that way with each other oh, yeah. under circumstances that okay. most people would just tell oh. each other go to hell. It's like there would be days since we've been out here that I'll be just really grumpy. And he'll... Find some random topic or something to make me laugh. 
Right. They'll randomly tickle me, knowing I hate being tickled. Right. You know, but even being without a home, a house, I'm always at home when I'm around. Well, that's good. You know, that makes it easier. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Especially having him around it. He may get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> and and he will many, many more. That's oh, yeah. for sure. If if you guys can understand that, it's easier to oh, get yeah. through that. And he knows when I'm cranky how to cheer me up. The the beautiful thing about this is if you guys can live under these circumstances together, imagine what it's going to be oh, yeah. when things are okay. It's like he can he actually he was able to be able to get into a place right now. That's what he was saying. And he refuses to because he Amen. doesn't want me out here That's alone. a good man. Keep him. Oh, yeah. No matter. <laughs> I mean, he, he's fucked up. He's messed he up pretty again. bad um, recently. But yeah. it took him realizing that I'm not going to give up. <sighs> right. You know, well, me and my wife, we've been through infidelities, breakups, makeups. I don't know how many times he's... Truth. And honesty you know. with each other. Oh, yeah. You know, there's been... I knew he... He had cheated once. And it's recent. And he pulled his own head out of his own ass. Like, he realized, yeah, I'm not going to stop fighting. You know, I've fought for five years to stay with him. To be with him through everything. Well, that's good. That's good. And there's so many more years. And he's always telling me, if you die first, I'm going to have your... You, you stuffed and you're going to be sitting in my room. Like, yeah. He wants. I'm a minister, and I often reflect to the words that Christ said when he was nailed on the cross. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And it's so true, especially with us I may now. not forget, but I always forgive. People <laughs> tell you to forgive and forget. Well, you can never forget, but you no, can no. always forget. That's right. No, Forgiveness, you never forget. Because forgetting means you may stumble into it again yeah so you know and and don't sell him short because he stumbled either because sometimes we him. don't even realize what we're doing when we're doing it yeah especially when there's circumstances that we've been through i exactly. understand it you know stress causes a lot of circumstances oh, yeah. and i'm um, my uh, doctor diagnosed me with a worst case of taking time bomb anger, where normal people have a really long fuse with that. I have right. a tiny fuse. One word to just. <laughs> I call it up. hoodie syndrome. You know, and, and my wife has that same thing. They call it a. Uh, uh, oh gosh, here we go. My doctor's always called it a ticking time <laughs> bomb because it, it's just sitting there. Bi bipolar up. type. Uh, frame yeah. of mind and with me i have personalities <laughs> a and, lot of them so along with the bipolar and that it's you never know who's gonna be out on any day it could be right. the worst of my right. demons or we all deal with that hmm? and you know it's just like a that. lot of us won't admit it hmm? you know i have so you've got the upper hand some pretty cool people that had will admit yeah this is another personality of mine right you know i there are those that are afraid they don't want to be crazy and i'm like to me, I'm not crazy. I'm me. Right. I'm different. I'm unique. Unique. Exactly. You know? I, had, I love it. That's right. Well, since we've, every time we've been homeless, I've had people come up to him and saying they wish they could clone me because I'm different. You know, I've stuck by him through everything. He's stuck by me through everything. And I've lost a lot of people in my life. And I don't know where I'd be without him. Well, through it I'll all. tell you. If, if you feel that strong about each other and i can see i i talked with him first and now i'm speaking with you mm -hmm. and you audience ought to know by listening to both of these people there's love there you know Pain there's concern ass, for one another huh he'd rather be out here with me than have been a warm home without that's right and let's let's turn our attention to that some people choose to be homeless for good reason. So for us to set and point fingers and oh, yeah. think things that we have no idea about yeah. is rather rude and okay. it's disgusting to you yourself, people. So 
You never know what people have been through. Get out and talk to people. Okay. You know, back when I lived in California, I was part of the human service club at a college I went to. Ah. And I was also taking the human service class, and one of the assignments we had was we could either A, go out and help, B, you know, just talk to the homeless and help them, or B, awesome. become homeless for a week. That was a class and assignment? Was, yeah. And that's cool. one thing my teacher and my professor, she was awesome. Her name was Dr. Kennard. She opened my eyes to a lot of things. Awesome. And by doing that project, I chose to be homeless because right. that was either a week of homeless or just talking to them. I found out some of the kindest people in this world you will meet are homeless. That's right. You know, I that's right. One of my exes and I had gotten to a kind of physical, ver, you know, physical slash verbal argument about it, and he read Brit my shirt, and my boob was showing. This homeless guy had saw the whole thing, and he took his shirt off his back and gave it to me. And I Amen. couldn't, I didn't even notice. I was so upset with what was going on. I didn't even notice that my shirt was ripped. And I was, he was homeless. He was really cool. You know, he did that. And he goes, no young lady should be out here with their boob showing like that. Right. And it was like, I didn't even notice it. And there is decency. You know, my real dad, you know, he's been homeless. He's gone through hell. And to me, I'd rather be without a house because what is a house really? That's right. It's boards. It's, it's material. It's That's right. something you're not going to be able to take to the grave. That's right. And if you can't have the one you love with you, then what's the point? That's right. You know, I, that is a good point. I love, I love that man. He's pain in my ass, but I love him. He's willing to put up with me and stay out here. That's what's Rather important than having a home. right there. A lot of people don't realize we all have our individual problems. Yeah. Finding those that are willing to put up with them just because. Five that's years of hard putting to up do. with me is hard. I don't know how my mom that raised me did it. You know, <laughs> she's was, a mother. I was raised by no. my aunt since I was six, and she's been like my mom. Hell. She comes out here once or twice a week just to bring, make sure I have water, make sure I have food, make sure that's I get, good. You know, fruits and vegetables. She make sure Caring. I have firewood. You know, half the stuff I have for camping, she gave me because. Amen. You know. And that's what it's about: is caring for individuals. Yeah, and she may not be able to help me with a place, but she helps me with what she can when she can. Yeah, it's hard for everybody in America now. Oh, Not yeah. only dead America, but it's spreading. Oh, yeah. And we have to come <laughs> together and realize. I have a friend, I think it's in Minnesota or Missouri or somewhere out in the East Coast. That He's a really good friend of mine. Um, he recently became homeless, too. You know, and to him, he's, he's still young. And I'm, I'm 32. I've seen shit. <laughs> Almost 32. He's 19, hasn't really lived huh. life, and yep. he became homeless. Just getting started. You know? And it's like, you see them going and becoming homeless younger these days. Yeah. And it's sad because yeah. he's a hard worker. He was a living caregiver. He did what he could, and something happened, and he became homeless. Yes. And you never know what that something, something could, yeah. could be. That's right. You know, with me... I didn't choose this, but at this point, I'd rather be out here than in a loud city. That's right. You know, That's right. Out here, at least, I, you know, Mother Nature's a little temperamental. Right. But it's safer for me. With you know, there's so many cool people like the couple and the yes. band. They're. It's a community. Yeah. It's just like a neighborhood. Oh yeah. Just in a different sense is mm -hmm. all. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Back in the day, there used to be gypsies. And uh, they would band together in Rome, and they were perfectly happy oh, with yeah. this type of lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. it's it's nothing new to be homeless. Mm -hmm. But like you said, finding the happiness where the heart is, oh, is your home. Exactly. You, you know, a house is a house. It's just a building. Boards, wood, 
right. concrete shit that can get you destroyed. You make the home. That's you know, right. Things that can get destroyed, whereas your home, the only way it gets destroyed is if that one passes. That's right. And to me, if he passed away, I would have no home. Yeah. I'd be wandering aimless. And that's one of those stresses that we deal with out here in dead oh. America every day. You know, especially in the freezing weather. Like Yes. It gets pretty cold, I mean. Well, you're in Klamath County, <laughs> Oregon, and that's Crater Lake, people. Yeah. So oh, the lake across the road. <laughs> the yes. wind. It's, it's not easy for mm -hmm. people. And the struggles they face in dead America, they could use a little compassion. Don't just walk by. Stop and say hi. Maybe buy a hamburger. You know, a simple hello once in a while is wonderful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just uh, care. How I was sitting out in front of Walmart sometimes because there have been times where we were houseless and we sat out in front of Walmart. We don't, we'd just be sitting there smoking a cigarette or drinking a soda or talking or charging up our electronics, you know, so we could find somewhere to go. And there, I've met some pretty cool people. Like, I was at Walmart when I first became homeless on the 30th, and I had enough to get a tent and a sleeping bag, and I was a little shy of getting a pack of cigarettes, and this lady behind me bought me a pack, and it was really, she was really cool. I really thanked her for that, because yeah. me without a cigarette going through stress is like a tornado hitting a small town. It's not town. easy. I used to smoke. I know that uh, feeling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been smoking for quite a long time, and... It was not everybody's, you know, there are some people that understand. You That's know? right. There have been times where we, because we were all around sometimes, we'd be digging through ashtrays for the cigarettes used for tobacco. Yeah, we'd I've have tubes. There. and I used and, to wait outside the banks and people, they're rushing to go in them banks and they would just light from their car to the door, take a couple hits and boom. Well, I'd break off the filter and there's a whole cigarette. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's how people out here in dead America live. Yeah, because some, you know, there's not every day you can afford a pack. That's right. And you know. believe me, sometimes when you're under those stresses, that cigarette is the <laughs> most important thing in your life. And there's been people that have handed us, I've been in like Rick's like yes. one time, and bought two packs from themselves, seen us in the, digging through an ashtray and like, here, just take it. You that's know, right. Like, there are good people. You know, there's been times people have handed us food, and I'm just like, it's, it's grateful to see there's more of those people nowadays yeah. than back a few years ago. Hopefully we start seeing that trend grow yeah. a little more towards helping others. You know, I'm kind to everybody. I give when I can. That's right. You know, I've helped a lot of people. Like my brother that passed away, he was houseless when I yeah. first met him. He was the nicest guy ever. He would sit out front of Safeway and put people's carts away. And he wouldn't even yeah. beg for He was just telling us about that in his interview. <laughs> you know, he was a, yeah. the way that people should be. That's you know? the way a lot of homeless people are. Yeah. And people think, oh, because they're homeless, sometimes that's not by choice. They're afraid to talk to them. Yeah. And even if we're not begging for change or anything, it's like they look at us funny. And it's that's right. Like, that's right. I'm human. I bleed the same way you do. That's right. <laughs> you know, I, everything that Good you point. do, I do. You know, I'm not some ape in the, in the forest out in the middle of Amen. nowhere. As much That's as I right. love nature, I wouldn't resort to that. You know, well, I, I'll I, tell you, we have to wrap this okay. one up. But I want to invite you to another episode. Okay. I'm going to be back out. I love to come out and talk. Yeah. I never thought of doing this as a profession or yeah. try to get people's stories out in this way. Yeah. But I really think this show, Dead America, is the answer to curing some of these problems. Okay. And, people... and I hope you feel comfortable. And, yeah. you know, we, we want to try to help heal the divides, the oh, yeah. misunderstandings. Oh, yeah. It's all about humanity, people. Oh, yeah. That's a big word. <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, yeah. Uh, getting your story just heard, it relieves, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It, it, it really helps. Does. Yeah. So, 
All right, folks, that's another one for Dead America. Join us next time for our next episode. And as always, I'm Ed with Dead America. Out.